Hi everybody, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge. And I did it guys, I gave in to the craze that's sweeping the romance booktuber community and I've got myself one of these eBay historical romance mystery boxes. I ordered from the shop Books on 7th Avenue, um, is the one that I picked. And, you know, I've seen Jess do this. I know she was inspired by someone else. Chandler Ainsley just put up her video. I've seen um, some of my friends have done them. Tamika did it. Um, I know my friend Izzy's doing it. Everyone was doing it. And so I gave in to peer pressure. And I was able to go onto eBay, pick the store, pick that I wanted these books. And then you can kind of put in the note to the seller, like, what you're looking for in your historical romances um or you could you know if you've never read a historical romance or never purchased one and want to like dive in i guess you you know wouldn't have to put any notes in but as you can see i have a lot of them i have a whole nother shelf over there and over there so i have about three to four hundred historical romances so i was i was nervous to do this because i was like what if i get some that i own and then i was like you know what there are billions millions billions of them so I put in my notes though I put please don't send me any Lisa Claypas, Julia Quinn, Lorraine Heath, Tessa Dare or Eloisa James I think because I own quite a few of those and then I think I put in that I like I like governess books I was looking for some pirate and I like Scottish ones um and I think that's the only notes I put in because uh, you know of course and the step backs because everyone's looking for those that's what the I think that is so fun because for so long like the step backs were the cringy part like that's why they're a step back is because they were people's like dirty little secrets and now it's like give me them you know we have step back Saturday on Instagram and it's like show me these dirty these funny naughty dirty covers and so I'm so excited so I have not even peeked in here I'm so excited. You can tell I'm talking like so energetically. I have been stalking the eBay thing, waiting for this to get sent. They shipped it really fast. They shipped it really fast. And all I've done is cut the top and let's go. Um, oh my God, I'm so excited. Okay, I'm just gonna take the stuffing out. It's in a garbage bag, which I knew that. My note's on the top. I'm gonna not look because I wanna see my note. So the box price, by the way, was $25, and then my shipping was $7.60, so I paid $32 for 20 bucks, which is great. It's just great. Um, thank you so much for your order. Cute little bookmark on the top. And I'm just going to pull these. I'm not going to look or anything. I'm just going to pull them out one at a time. <gasps> oh my god, I'm so excited. <laughs> oh jeez, I get why people do this. Like... I already want to do another one of these because we don't have a lot of it. Anyway, okay. This first one, that's the cover. It's called Midnight and Magnolias by Rebecca Paisley. This one is a lying unscrupulous doctor told Peachy McGee. Oh my God, her name is Peachy McGee. <laughs> She was dying. Now the wildly unpredictable Carolina Mountain Beauty has resolved to live the last of her life to the fullest. She sets out for the tiny island kingdom of Aven Aventine to marry herself a prince. But well, but while Seneca, the heir to the Aventine throne, is wealthy and unbearably handsome, his aristocratic arrogance infuriates the flame-haired Hellion, and Peachy is not about to let any domineering blue blood have his royal way with her, not unless Seneca reveals the caring, gentle soul hidden beneath his princely mask and learns to love this charming country lass. Holy crap. So she's an American, that must be then, who tries to find a prince. This is the, oh my god, I have never heard of this. Okay, this is 1992. Wow. Okay, this is gonna be fun. Holy crap, that's so cool. All right, this is so fun. I'm so glad I did this, it was totally worth it. Ooh, okay. Silken Thread by Patricia Ryan. We got a medieval looking castle maybe. Let's see what year. Yep, medieval, this is 1165. So this one is Graham Fox is on a secret mission 
rescuing his lord's illegitimate daughter from the clutches of her abusive husband. As payment for his service, Graham will receive her twin's hand in marriage and a vast estate, much more than any landless soldier could ever hope. Attacked in London, Graham is almost killed. He is given a chance to heal at the humble throne of Joanna Chapman, a silk merchant's lovely widow. Her past has taught her not to trust any man, especially one as rakishly handsome and mysterious as Graham, but his raw strength and gentle touch unleash a blistering passion for Joanna. Wow, that's so cool. I've never heard of Patricia Ryan. Pretty simple cover, but still really cool. And I love, I love the, I just love the idea of this. That's awesome. That seems great. This is going to be so fun. Oh, okay. First one that I'm a little nervous about. I'm not a huge fan of this one is an anthology. Not a huge fan of that. And it's also Christmas, which I hate Christmas books. So I'm not even going to read the back of this one. And I've also never heard of any of these authors. So I might end up, I'll probably give this one maybe to my sister. Maybe she'd be interested in it. Otherwise, I'll just probably redonate it. That's the thing with this. If I get even half of these books are like ones I don't have or ones I'm excited to read. Ooh, this one has a step back. I can tell. Um, I'll be happy. Ah! It's Katherine Coulter. That's awesome. I know this one doesn't have a cute step back. So I've actually read this book. Um, I don't think I own this one anymore because this is in the Sherbrooke series. It's not in the original trilogy um, because this book started out with an original trilogy and then she kept adding books to it. Um, I've read every historical romance that Catherine Coulter has written, but I don't own this one anymore. And I have recently been thinking about rereading them. So this I'll consider a win because it is during like the Regency period. And this one is about um, Corinne Monroe and she has a widowed son that she wants to marry her best friend's daughter, Miss Sophie Wilkie. Julian saw Sophie when she was 12 years old. Okay, so this is an arranged marriage. See, I say I've read it, but I read Julia, or I, Julia Quinn. Yes, I love it. I read Catherine Coulter back in high school, so I've read thousands, literally thousands since then, but I'm not mad at this because I, I love Catherine Coulter. I just, I got rid of the later ones in the series because I moved a lot as a young adult. I'm still a young adult, but younger, so I didn't know. Ooh, Amanda Quick. Okay, okay. I've been wanting to try some books by her. She's been suggested to me. So this one, this one seems kind of like a mystery maybe. Wait until midnight. It's a step back, but it's of the author. That's okay. This one says, it could have been a scene from one of my novels. Uh, oh, this is, it's from her point of view. Okay. Oh no, the writer is an author. Ah! Imagine my shock and distress when Mr. Hardsey accused me of being part of the, okay. So this woman gets accused of murder and it's like a Regency, I think. I'm not sure. Late in the, yeah, it says late in the reign of Queen Victoria. So I've never read Amanda Quick. I've heard good stuff about her. So well, I'm going to put that one on the maybe side. So we'll see. Ooh. 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 Okay. Okay. They couldn't know this, but I really like gypsy books. I'm, that's incorrect, but. I love that set, like the Romani people. I really, really love them. And this one's called Gypsy Lover by Edith Layton. Ooh, this one's got a pretty, I like this. And so this one is about lovely Meg Shaw is a respectable governess. Ooh, yay, this is a governess one. I asked for those. Um, and it is her duty to bring her charge safely home when the headstrong heiress runs away. But the perils before a young woman alone in a dark English country roads pale before the dangers posed by daft renard a dashing reckless gentleman with gypsy blood who shows meg every step okay so one of my new book boyfriends of 2020 is cam rohan from uh lisa claypass's uh uh mind till midnight and he is half uh romani and oh so i'm getting like cam vibes right now i'm excited 
An infuriating scoundrel, Daft has his own reasons for wanting to join Meg on her journey, though scandal will certainly ensue if she's discovered in the company of the ton's most notorious black sheep. Yet something powerful and inexplicable, something more than a need for safety in the night, is drawing Meg into his bold and brash arms, and her good name may well be the price she must pay for surrendering to the sweet temptation of an untamed gypsy lover. Oh my gosh. I'm excited. Like, they couldn't know that. So it has a uh, Romani hero and a uh, governess who's trying to get her ward back. So that's a win. Ooh, this is fun. Yes, a Celeste Bradley. So into this. Here's a step back. So I didn't put her on my list. I have also read all of Celeste Bradley's. Um, she has these spy books, which is super cool because I'm actually really into the more like devious ones right now. She has these books called The Liars Club, The Heiress Bride series, and The Royal Four. And then her her ongoing series right now is The Wicked Worthingtons, which I'm still reading right now. So they couldn't know this, but I absolutely love her. I think I did write, I also said I wanted like criminals and pirates. Like I didn't just say, um, I didn't just say pirates. I said criminals too, because I've been reading a lot like the, um, the dangerous, what is it? The, blah, 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 the, I totally forgot the Kerrigan Barnes series. I've been loving that. So this one is book, I think this might be book three, which is unfortunate but that's okay because I've read them all. Um, but this one is Sophie Blake's grandfather willed his fortune to his first granddaughters to marry a duke. To the first of his granddaughters to marry a duke. Since her cousin Deidre will seal the deal any day, the quiet bookish Sophie can sit back and enjoy her time with the only man she truly adores, Graham. No matter that the part-time charmer part scoundrel has absolutely no designs on her, Sophie is content to engage Graham in lively conversation, beat him at his cards, and probe at the hidden the darkness hiding behind his rakish mask. Then Graham unexpectedly gains a title, an estate is near ruins, and a mountain of debt. If there is any chance of survival, he must find a rich wife quickly. As he hunts for a bride begins, Sophie realizes that she isn't even in the running. Suddenly no, no, no longer content to be a wallflower, Sophie gets a stunning makeover and becomes the belle of the ball. Plenty of heads turning, including Graham's, but this beauty has secrets of her own. So that's cool. So this will be like a friends to lovers. And I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the like, she gets a makeover and then I love her. But I like a couple of things mentioned in this because I also like someone coming into a title and having to like clean it up. One of my favorite, um, one of my favorite Julia Quinn novels is Splendid, which is kind of about that. Um, so yeah, and I love, I, I like Celeste Bradley, so that's cool. Ooh, this is Benita Cran. Sorry, if that's bad. Ooh, so this is this step back. That's pretty. This one is a, okay, so this one's an American one. So this is a, this is a soft-hearted Baltimore heiress. Lovely but disastrously tender-hearted, oh my gosh, her name is Diamond Wingate, has, trouble, has terrible trouble saying no to the poor and unfortunate who beg at her gates, to entrepreneurs with big plans and no money, and worse, to the silver-tongued young men who lie up to propose marriage. So far, she has managed to keep her three fiancés a secret, <laughs> insisting she cannot marry until she turns 23, but her birthday and disaster are looming. Oh my gosh, this is hilarious. Rugged, independable Bear McQuaid has never taken a dime he didn't earn with his own hard work, but now his dream of building a railroad so close to coming true is about to collapse from lack of funds. Approaching Baltimore's infamous soft touch, he learns she has other assets as well, a delicate strawberry blonde beauty and shining intelligence and a fascination for the romance of the railroad. Then Bear uncovers Diamond's embarrassment of riches in fiancés as well as money and charms. Now he must make a choice, finance his dream through a little genteel black morrow, or do it the hard way by falling in love. That is so cute. The soft touch. The, to tame a tough man, it takes a soft touch. That is, I love that it's shimmery. I, I really love this step back. So definitely be looking out for that in a future step back Saturday because I'm into it. I also love books that are purple and pink. Um, which is just a silly thing, but I love them. 
Ooh. Okay, this isn't horrible. This is a Harlequin, a Western Harlequin. I might have said I wanted some Westerns. Man, I can't remember. I wish they would have told me everything that's on there. So this is a Harlequin from 2000. Um, protecting Jenny. Oh my gosh. That's cute. <laughs> Jenny with two N's. Waitressing in the Arizona desert was a far cry from Jenny Andrews' high society background, but it couldn't be far enough from the future her father had planned for her, even if it meant wasting her doctoring skills slicing bacon. Oh, she wants to be a doctor, and her name is Jenny. I'm excited. <laughs> um, as determined as she was beautiful, Jenny would let no one stop her from living her own life, not even the handsome stranger who kept turning up whenever she seemed to meet him. Detective turned rancher Cole Brandt couldn't deny his attraction to the woman he first spotted at the depot or his curiosity about her. But these days, Cole was steering clear of danger, and the more he saw of Jenny Andrews, the more the pretty Eastern miss looked like trouble. This seems cute. This is pretty big for a Harlequin, maybe. It's almost 300 pages. This seems cute. I'm into it. That's fun. Her name is Jenny and she wants to be a doctor. And you know, this ain't a bad cover either. Like, if you can see it up close, like it's still, it's not like super sexy or anything, but it's not bad. She kind of looks like Kate Winslet. Doesn't she look like Kate Winslet in the Titanic, that outfit she wears in the beginning? I am I feel good about that one. Guys, I'm only halfway in and we're, this is gonna be such a long video. I'm sorry, but I'm excited. Ooh, here we go. Oh, that's just a disappointment. So I got a Johanna and Lindsay, but it doesn't have a step back. It's fake. Dang it. All right. Well, this is a 1986 Johanna Lindsay. Um, a Heart So Wild. I don't think I have this one. I said they could send me Johanna Lindsay. Um, because I only have like seven and she has like 50 books. So it was fine. But this one is Courtney Hart knows her missing father is alive. Lost somewhere deep in Indian territory. A little nervous already. And the man she chooses to lead her to him is as wild and dangerous as the land itself. The handsome, enigmatic gunslinger called Chandos. Okay. With eyes bluer than the frontier sky. Ooh, boy. Chandos inflames the beautiful innocent with wanton desire, yet she fears him for the dark secrets that tortures his soul. Shared perils to their lives and hearts will teach them to trust and to unleash wild passions only love can tame. All right, we'll see. I mean, I'm gonna keep getting Joanna and Lindsay's, but I'm still like, I'm nervous. I mostly get them for how pretty they are. Oh, here's another Christmas. <gasps> this one is Mary Below. Nice, okay, okay. I'll forgive it. And it's also, oh no, I take it back. This one is a bunch of stories too. Dang it, you guys were doing so good. So this is a Mary Below Christmas book, which the front's really pretty, but dang it, it's five stories. I really don't like anthologies, guys. I really don't like them like at all. And I don't know the characters in this one, so that makes it even more um, like hard. Like it'd be one thing if like this was Jennifer Ashley and it was like a Mackenzie one, but I haven't read any of these. And so when I get a anthology that is, you know, it's kind of disappointing so that one's in I'm gonna put that in the no stack but that's okay it's pretty and maybe I'll save it for Christmas pictures later on all right uh, this is windfall by Cindy Colby this is a very like unencumbered cover like I kind of like that like it has a picture on it and then it's just very like plain and I kind of like that okay this one is American this one takes place in Wyoming and this one is two couples okay that's kind of cool is this two stories it much as i'll be mixed together jake he woke from months of unconsciousness Ooh, i like amnesia stories with his body healed but his mind full of unanswered questions was there a woman waiting somewhere for him a family a place he belonged shannon she had walked away from her abusive father in the only home she'd ever known could a soldier with no past be the future she prayed for grace she had tried to be brave when the need to capture a traitor ripped her lover from her arms. Would it take even more courage to face him now that his seed blossomed within her? Oh boy, she pregnant. Jenny, 
Her grandfather's beloved ranch had become a haven for all those she held dear, but now the greed of one underhanded and land baron threatened everything they'd worked for. How could she keep the vision of her murdered parents alive for the generations? Okay, well, this one says it's a leisure historical romance, so this is very interesting. We shall have to see. I don't know. I'm not feeling like a deep urge to read this one quickly, but again, the cover's not horrible, and I've never heard of this author before, so we'll put that on the maybe side. Ooh, Lisa Jackson, Wild and Wicked. All right, all right. Lisa Jackson is on my radar. This one is just kind of a plain cover, but I like it. I like the ones that have the, like, just the random items on them. I know that's weird, but, like, it's the same as, like, this. You know, I, I don't mind those covers. Um, this one is Every Eye is in the Great Hall. Every eye in the Great Hall was on Lady April in a clinging white gown. She floated through the revelers like a wanton angel, ooh, inflaming the interest of Lord Devlin. Brazenly, he took her in his arms and promised her ecstasy. Before the night was over, she vanished, along with the castle jewels, the Lord's finest horses, and his young son. All that remained of the kidnapping temptress was her gown pooled on his chamber floor, mysteriously stained with blood. But Devlin's plan to punish her goes awry when he discovers April's true motives and her own betrayal by those she trusted. For his great weakness is his undeniable attraction to the seductive woman whose kisses can still carry the sting of treason. Wow, okay, so this one is a criminal whoa in 1283 all right so this is a this is a medieval that's pretty cool and i guess this is also kind of christmasy which christmas is fine for me when it's not anthologies like so often christmas is an anthology book because it's like you're telling a bunch of different people's story or it's a get together or it's a hallmark which i'm not knocking on hallmark they're just not my style of romance i like it down and dirty and sexy smexy and they're usually not but this one seems fun. Dark Sapphire. I've also heard of that book before. And I've never read a Lisa Jackson. So I'll put that in the yes pile. Getting out. Oh, man. What's that? Oh, oh boy. This is a, this is a Western one. Jillian Hart uh, wrote Cooper's Wife. Oh, the back is actually kind of cute. The front's just some uh, cowboy boots left by the... Oh, it's kind of like a full one. Like, they're running to the lake, and there's the... That's cute. This one is... Sheriff Braddock's proposal seemed too good to be true. A new life dawned for Amy Bauer and her daughter under the wide Montana sky. The last was finally... The past was finally behind them, and the future meant a home and welcome arms, a loving father in search of a bride, or so Anna thought. Cooper Braddock had too many females in his life already. He hadn't arranged this marriage. His two determined little girls had. And though half the town thought that he and Anna would make the perfect couple, Cooper wasn't convinced. How convenient would it be to be married to the most beautiful woman in town? Hmm. All right. This is also a Harlequin um, from November 1999. All right. All right. I see you, Harlequin. I see you guys. I see you. That seems kind of cute. That seems a little bit too cutesy for me. But we'll see. I'm trying to be open-minded. Ooh, this is a thick one. Ooh, snap. Oh, oh, oh my God. <laughs> she is straight. They are naked. They are naked on this cover. Like that water is being, uh, that's covering up the money shot right there. That is a seductively arched behind. Wow, The Last Viking by Sandra Hill. Oh my gosh, my heart sped up just a little bit, guys. Whoo, whoo. This book is from 1998. Oh my gosh, I'm kind of excited about this. The Last Viking, I love it. He was six feet, four inches of pure unadulterated male. He wore nothing but a leather tunic, spoken in an ancient tongue, and he was standing in Professor Meredith Foster's living room. The medieval historian told herself he was part of a practical joke. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. So this is the time travel. This is the time travel. Holy shit. Oh, I love those. Wow. Okay. Um, everything about him seemed so authentic. Suddenly, Meredith was memorized by his bronze muscular form, and her body surrendered to the fantasy that Gerald Erickson really was a Viking from a thousand years ago, sent only to pleasure her. 
<laughs> but as she tried to teach him to eat spaghetti and use a computer, she realized he knew an awful lot about the 10th century and so little about the 20th. And as he helped her fulfill her grandfather's dream of recreating a Viking ship, he awakened her to dreams of her own until she wondered if the hand of fate had thrust her into the loving arms of the last Viking. Oh my God. Oh my God. I love time travel books, but they're hard because I don't always find ones that are good. But, oh my God, that's so cool. Okay. That's a tricky way to do historical romance, though. I wonder if she ends up going back in time to him at all. Um, because that's something that can happen. Because it sounds like they'll be spending their time in 2000 and not in the past, which is interesting. But, <gasps> oh, I just got super excited. Okay, this one's called Splendor. And it says, Christine Dorsey. No step back. This is from 1996. And it says, once upon a time, there was a beautiful queen who lived in a tiny European kingdom, but she wasn't happy. Cassandra, ruler of Breslovia, <laughs> was much too young to be head of state and far too lovely to be married to a pompous, self-centered grand duke, whose name was Cardinal S Sinzen. <laughs> he wanted the throne for himself, and he intended to do away with Queen Cassandra to get it. And a most unlikely hero named Maximil Maximilian Hawk third son of the British nobleman, to die for handsome and devil may care reckless. A trumped up charge of treason had gotten him drummed out of his majesty's army. Now, posted as military advisor to Breslovia, Max couldn't risk doing anything to jeopardize his last chance to prove himself. Until he met Cassandra, seducing her was his first mistake. Falling in love with her world was, would be a far more dangerous splendor. Wow, that's interesting. Wow, like, that's a cool premise. Like, I'm intrigued. All right, I'm intrigued. <gasps> oh, yeah. Wow, he's got a serious face on. All right, all right. This is Captive by Colleen Faulkner. Oh, my word. This one is from 1994. This is a uh, uh, 1758, all right. Tess, um, Tess Morgan had journeyed across the sea to the Maryland colony in search of a better life. Instead, the brave British innocent finds a battle-torn land and passion in the arms of Raven, the gentle Lenape warrior who saves her from a savage fate. Uh -oh. But Tess is bound by her promise to another, and Raven dares not trust this woman whose touch has enslaved him, yet whose blood vow to his people has set him on the path of rage and vengeance. Now, as cruel destiny forces her to become Raven's prisoner, Tess must make a choice to fight for her freedom or for the tender captor she has come to cherish with the love that will hold her forever captive. Okay. Well, this one has a pretty cover, but real nervous by the premise of everything. So but it's pretty. And there's a feather on that one too. That's cool. Oh my. Okay. Terry Brisbane. Oh, I've heard of this. The King's Mistress. All right. This is medieval. Um, this says there were worse things than to be shackled in marriage to a handsome, powerful Lord who desired her. But Margaret of Alan Khan was bred to be the consort to the king and could not abide her fate. She had great power as Henry Plantagenet's mistress, oh no, and to be set aside and promised as the bride to noble Oric of Shiloh was an insult she could not bear. Oric knew his reluctant bride was a creature of the court with many secrets, and yet Margaret of Alan Khan would make him a perfect partner, accomplished and gracious, a true lady of the keep, if only she could release her turbulent past and embrace a passionate future in his arms. So this is a Harlequin historical as well. Ooh, the inside has it in like black and white. That's cool. And okay, we'll see about this one. Not a huge fan of, but we'll see. This might be, you know, changing it up. So this is from 2005 by Terry Brisbane. So we'll see. I don't know when I would get to one like that because that's not my like normal thing. Okay, so there's just two left. Ooh, yay! 
you. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I am so excited. Okay. This author, I have read one book by and I love her. Okay. This is The Viscount's Wicked Ways and this is Anne Mallory. So she also wrote <coughs> One Night is Never Enough, which I read just like last month and I loved it. So that's awesome. This one is Thomas Ashe, the brooding Viscount Blackfield, is a man any lady would shun. But Patience Harrington, try as she might, has never been a proper lady. Her bumbled London season left her with no marital prospects and no recourse but to accept her father's invitation to travel to gloomy Blackfield Castle. Surely, spending a few nights in the presence of a priceless antiques and a devilish Viscount can't be as bad as facing the town gossip. Focused slowly on his secret government project, Thomas cares little for the valuable antiques he's recently inherited. The troublesome young woman who has come to assess them, however, stirs his senses in every way. Patience is a distraction Thomas can ill afford, a beautiful temptation that makes him ache with desire. For a spy is threatening to destroy all he has built, and Patience is hiding something. With so much at stake, Thomas must do whatever it takes to seduce the truth from Patience's lips before lives and his own heart are lost. So this one may be a criminal romance. Um, also, it's by Anne Mallory, which I've been wanting to read more of her. So A plus for that one. All right, let's see what the last one, what's the last book? Ooh, this, oh my. Okay, we got another har Harlequin. This is The Stolen Bride by Brenda Joyce. All right, okay, okay, let's see here. This one looks by, all right. Here we go. Betrothed to a man of honor, her heart belongs to a traitor. Sean O'Neill was once everything to Eleanor de Warren, but since he disappeared from his ancestral home, there has been no word, and even Eleanor has abandoned hope, promising her hand to another. Then just days before her wedding, Sean appears, but the boy who was once her protector is now a stranger, hardened by prison and on the run. Weary and hunted, Sean is shocked to find that little Elle has become the beautiful, desirable Eleanor. Though he refuses to endanger her by pressing his claim, his resolve to stay away is sorely tested by the determination of a woman who will not be forsaken again. And then, at a moment's passion, Sean steals another man's bride. It is Eleanor who has the power to steal his heart. All right, so this one seems like it's a criminal. Oh my gosh, this one has a step back. Oh, look at that, he's in the mirror. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. That's cool. I'm totally into that. This was in 2006. Wow. All right. All right. Maybe I'll have to read this for my like Harlequin book for the, the summer fling. Maybe I'm going to change it up because I just got four of these. All right. So let's see. Five. So out of the 20... There are 13 that I'm actively interested, excited for, or were something that was in my list. So there was a lot of criminal ones. There was one governess one. There was five authors that I knew, and then a bunch of them that I don't. So let's see, the ones I'm most excited for. Probably Gypsy Lover, because this is a governess one as well as it has Romani in it, which makes me happy. I also like this idea of the soft touch by Belinda uh, Cran, like that she can't say no to any of her suitors. I think that's really cute. And then The Stolen Bride got me super excited. And, oh, the first one that I grabbed too, The Midnight, M Midnight and Magnolias. I just love that her name is Peachy McGee. <laughs> but I really want to check it out because of that because it just seems ridiculous but also really fun so yeah wow okay this was such an adrenaline rush I had such a fun time I definitely want to do another one of these um they sent me at least one book in all the things that I mentioned um there was seven of these that I like will probably just turn around and re um donate but for $30 to find 13 books that I like, that's really great. You're not finding cheaper than that. Even at some thrift stores, they're selling books for a dollar a piece um, or more. So definitely check this out if you're interested. I will link the shop below that I used. Um, they were still taking orders. And if not, you can literally type in historical romance mystery box. And there's like 
20 options to choose from. You can even try to find one that's within your own state if you want faster shipping. I know my friend Nicole who ordered this, she got it in like two days because it was in her own state. So you can do that. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Sorry for the hyper attitude, but historical romance is my jam. And when I saw that someone was doing these. I just had to do it. So thank you so much for watching. I put up new videos three to four times a week and you can watch some more of them right now. Bye.